Hello and welcome to week 3 of the e-course Whole Brain Functioning to Superior Mental Power. By this time, if you're following the training schedule, you're probably already feeling some of the benefits of the whole brain functioning, but will continue to delve into harder activities to increase your brain power. I don't know what are your main reasons for undertaking this course. It can be just as a simple health measure or it can be about increasing your thinking power. Whatever it is, just make sure that you measure objectively the results that you are achieving with this. And this week we'll focus on brain health, on what you can eat, supplement and other things that you can do on your day-to-day -day life to keep your brain healthy and active. The first thing that we are going to go into is brain nutrition. The food that you put into your body is of extreme importance for your brain optimization. Have you ever had an heavy meal only to discover later that your mind was cloggy and the only thing that you wanted to do was sleeping? Or maybe drinking too much coffee and finding yourself jumpy and with lower concentration? We all know, of course, we all know the effects of an exaggerated consumption of alcohol, right? The main point is, what we eat and drink heavily influences your brain functioning for better or worse. In here, I'm just going to give you some basic tips on brain nutrition, but I won't enter into too many details since a whole course could be done just on this and I still have lots of ground to cover on this one. The first step is drinking lots of water. Considering that your brain is 80% water, the first thing that you need to do to get your brain in top shape is to drink more water. Even slight dehydration can raise stress hormones which can really damage your brain over time. Drink as much as you need to keep yourself hydrated and get rid of everything white. White sugar, white flour and white rice. You don't need any of this in your nutrition. I advise you to do a deeper search on Google about the danger of those three. Get rid of junk food. Not too much to say on this one. I think pretty much the name says it all. Pizza, hamburgers, chips, nothing of this is healthy and we all know it. So the less you eat, the less fog you'll have in your mind. And this leads to Eat organic food as much as you can. It's nothing new that organic is better, but it's also more expensive. But if at least 20% of your foods are organic, it's much better than 0%. Eat as much organic as your budget allows. And antioxidants are the brain foods by default. Increase your consumption of these fruits and vegetables in order to keep your brain in top shape. Here are just a few examples. The best ones are really blueberries and blackberries, but everything else is good, like cranberries, strawberries, spinach, well, and everything else on this list. And lastly, fish. Fish oil has fairly recently been discovered as one of the best things that you can do to aid your concentration and your brain health overall. Doctors are recommending fatty fishes like salmon and swordfish that are very good because of the quality oil they provide. I really don't have time to get to the meat of this, but I highly recommend reading the book Metabolic Typing Diet. You can check it out on the recommended book section below. It will go into so much more details uh, on this whole brain nutrition, on food nutrition, on overall the best nutrition that you can have for your unique body type. I really recommend that you check out this book. It's no secret that a good night's sleep can do wonders for your brain. Sleep deprivation pretty much hurts your thinking in all ways that you can measure thinking, like attention, working memory, math knowledge, and so on. And most people's sleep hygiene is really not that good. Here are just a few tips to get a better and more quality sleep. Avoid, avoid before bed snacks, particularly grains and sugars. Sleep in complete darkness, and I cannot stress the importance of this because it's really, really important that your room, the room that you sleep in, is in complete and pitch dark. If you have just a few light sources like the clock or some light or whatever, just turn it off and just do your room for sleeping only in complete and pitch dark. No TV right before bed, and this has a very good reason. Um, aside from uh, making you an unnecessary stress, it's also uh, unnecessary stimulation, sorry. It's also that the 15 minutes before you fall asleep and the 15 minutes when you wake up are the two most suggestible periods that you have during your day because of your waves really go, go down, so it's really a suggestible period. If you watch TV before bed, you are just putting this um, uh, period of the day in the control of your TV, in the control of TV programming. Do you really want to do this? Do you really want the TV programming have so much influence over you? Because this is a highly suggestible state that you are into. 
Okay, another point is journaling, it is to just release your emotional stress before you go to sleep, avoid caffeine, alcohol and drugs, lose weight, remove clock from view, to just remove unnecessary stress uh, from sleeping or because you are just looking at the watch and you are looking at the time goes by and not falling asleep, it's going to put unnecessary stress in you, so just remove it from view. Keep your bed room just for sleeping, don't do anything else in that room. You can just keep it for sleeping. Don't work, uh, don't do anything else. Just go there and sleep. Don't change your bedtime. Just keep a regular bedtime. You wake up at the same hour. You'll go to sleep at the same hour. This is of very importance. Exercise, of course. And having a bedtime routine is also good because it, it, it really puts your brain into the mode of going to sleep. Okay, you are washing your teeth, you are putting on your pajamas. This is just putting your bed into brain mode, into bedtime mode and put your work away at least one hour before bed. Another important thing that you can do to improve your brain health is really to take naps. A power nap is typically a 20 to 45 minute nap taken in the afternoon. A power nap can be adequately refreshing and at times more restful than a full night's sleep. Some people routinely take midnight naps. The Spanish people even have the siesta. Napping is a socially acceptable thing. A NASA study showed a 26-minute nap improved a pilot performance more, by more than 25%. There are plenty of scientific research studies on napping. Just a simple search on Google provide them. So I'm focused here on two tips on how to take a nap. Don't sleep longer than 45 minutes, the ideal is 20 minutes, or then you'll wake up just in the middle of a slow wave cycle and be groggy uh, your whole day. And to find out your nap zone, meaning the ideal time to take a nap, you just have to do is add 12 hours after the midpoint of your sleep. So example, if you go to bed at 11 p.m. and you wake up at 7 a.m., your nap zone would start at 3 p.m. Oversimplification, yes, but it's a rule of thumb. Don't nap too close to bedtime, otherwise you'll disrupt your sleeping schedule. And how about brain supplements? I'm no medical doctor, so take this advice with a grain of salt and obviously consult your doctor before taking any kind of supplementation. The only supplement that I can really recommend for the brain is omega-3 fatty acids, especially high-quality krill oil. This is the one thing I notice a difference in many things that I tried and experiment with. I'm always researching about new brain supplements, but I really cannot find more efficient ones. Even the ones like Ginkgo biloba that is traditionally associated with brain development, I found several studies who concluded that there are no effects in taking it. So you can try to experiment yourself with the other ones, but the one that I wholeheartedly recommend is taking some form of omega-3 fatty acids, especially a high-quality krill oil. And now for something a little bit different, aromatherapy. Sometimes something as simple as a sniff could really activate your memory cells and boost your performance at work and with academics. Here we'll discuss some brain-friendly, memory-enhancing essential oils. This is a natural way to help your brain to function better. Okay, research has shown that women who smell the fragrance of lemon essential oil daily lost weight more quickly in clinical trials than those who simply exercised. Essential oils diffused in workplace made employees calmer and increased job efficiency. Lavender essential oil and several others is able to act as a potent aphrodisiac, especially for men. Stores are now using special odors to make customers buy things and spend more money. The lettery smell of a new car is an artificial odor sprayed on to just to enhance buyer satisfaction, and casinos are using odors to make people gamble more. London's Heathrow Airport has used the scent of pine needles to reduce passenger tension and stress. Bad odors can make people more aggressive. Olympic weightlifters have used smelling salts before competition just to boost their strength. Although going for a closed MRI scan can make people feel as if they are getting buried alive, a vanilla-like odor has been shown to reduce anxiety by 63% in patients going for such a test. Therapists and psychologists are increasingly uh, using essential oils in their practice with clients. It is said that essential oils have the most impact on the right hemisphere of the brain, the part of the brain that deals with emotion and imagination. Chants are um, said to bypass the left hemisphere, the orderly thinking brain and go directly to the seat of memory and emotions where they can evoke positive memories and heal past trauma. Okay, so as you can see, smells are powerful forces that can really change your mood and mindset. They have a surprising power to make us aggressive, happy, relaxed, anxious, focused or aroused. And here, I'm going to recommend you some specific essential oils for your brain. 
Essential oils are volatile plant liquids. Most are steam expressed and are a combination of hundreds of different chemicals, all naturally coexisting and producing a synergistic effect on health. Essential oils are chemically volatile because most are composed, at least partially, of light fragrant molecules that evaporate easily and are picked up by your respiratory system and detected as smells. Don't treat this part of the course lightly. The scents can really make a difference in your overall productivity of any given tasks. I cannot tell you the amount of times I used essential oils when I really wasn't in the mood for any creative work, so I just put a little bit of jasmine burning and everything changed, and I could be extremely productive. Try it for yourself. Just make sure you use high quality essential oils. Usually the more expensive the better. Just don't buy those that cost like a two or three or four dollars. And here are just a little bit of a list of some essential oils that I recommend. Spearmint helps absorbing, understanding and retaining information. Peppermint and eucalyptus is a boost of concentration and stimulates the nervous system to induce alertness and receptivity to information. Jasmine, rosemary, ginger, and citrus, these are the traditional oils and that have a clarifying action on the mind. They induce focus and alertness. These are pretty much the ones I use most. Lavender for reducing anxiety, vanilla and sweet orange as a mood lifter, uh, cardamom fortifies the senses and it's a potent pontic tonic for the brain and nervous system. Don't treat this lightly, use it, try it and let me know the results. Here are the methods that you can use to burn these oils. You can use an aromatherapy burner, you can fill a bowl with water, add 5 to 15 drops of essential oil, light the candle and inhale. This can be placed around your workspace. You can also do a quick inhalation, pour 3 to 4 drops of essential oil in the tissue and inhale directly for an instant effect. You can put it on a pillow so you can have a more restful sleep. You can pour a few drops of essential oil on a napkin and tuck it under your pillowcase. And you can use an electro diffuser. Add a few drops of essential oil to an electro diffuser for a continuous and long lasting effect. For myself, I usually use the aromatherapy burner in my office. I found the benefits are bigger than just a quick inhalation since I usually need it for a little bit more um, long term than just a quick few minutes effort. Okay, so now we'll start with the exercise. Exercise 10, non-dominant handwriting. You probably guessed this exercise was coming. It's time to start writing with your non-dominant hand. This exercise is just to get you started. So, all you have to do is buy a few of those children coloring books and start using your non-dominant hand to color them. This is precisely how children learn how to write and use the pencils. So, do at least 10 to 15 minutes of coloring with your non-dominant hand each day. And exercise 11 is another hemispheric exercise, sinking exercise. So, place your hands together with fingers interlaced, like in a prayer position, then separate your hands slightly so that your thumbs have space to rotate and start rotating one thumb counterclockwise and at the same time rotate the other thumb counterclockwise. Do it for one minute or so, then invert it. Don't rotate both thumbs on the same direction. This doesn't do anything. This is very easy and really doesn't do anything for hemisphere synchronization. Just make sure they are in alternate direction. If it's very hard for you, start with a simple variation. Extend your arms in front of you and draw a big circle in the air clockwise and at the same time draw a big circle in the air counterclockwise. Then switch it. Exercise 12 explores the use of your different senses. Our five senses are the portals or gateways through which the brain gets its entire contact with the outside world. We rely primarily on your senses of vision and hearing because they quickly tell us a lot about our environment. Our other senses, smell, taste and touch, are less frequently and obviously called upon. To understand this better, close your eyes and try walking through a room. Instantly, the world around you changes radically. Sounds, smells and spatial memories of your physical surroundings leap into consciousness. With vision gone, your sense of touch suddenly becomes paramount. Navigating even a familiar environment is a real challenge and your brain goes into really high alert. This exercise is all about breaking associations and using your senses in a new ways. Like for example, get one of those oils that are brain activating, like citrus or vanilla, and put it burning in several places of your house as soon as you wake up. This will create a new way of starting your day. When you're driving, explore the touch of your car. How does the steering wheel feel to the touch? How about the seat? And how about the gears? And so on. Touch them and feel them. 
you can start to associate an odor with the task. For example, every time you use the phone, you use the cinnamon smell. Every time you are studying, you use the, the mint, and so on. You can also learn braille or massage. If you really wish to take this step further, learn braille and really develop your sense of touch. Once a week, try a meal from a different country. Do a Japanese dinner or an Argentinian lunch. There are plenty of recipes on the internet from foods all over the world, so you have no excuse. Try one that you never tasted before. Another thing is grow a garden. This is one of the best ways to create all sorts of association like new smell, new touches. It's an amazing way to keep your brain well alive. I highly recommend the book Keep Your Brain Alive that I have recommended book section. There are plenty of exercises there that are pretty much similar to this one. Okay, so here's a summary of the exercises that you can do this week. Exercise 1 and 7 with the non-dominant hand activities, you pretty much can do it all the time. Exercise 10, the non-dominant handwriting, you do just enough, 10 minutes a day. The coloring books, just do it 10 minutes a day. Exercise 9 and 12, breaking routines in the different senses, you do it all the time. Start getting this into your day-to-day -day life, get into the habit of breaking routines and using your different senses during your day. And exercise 2 and 6 of cross crawling, you do a 3 series of 24 movements twice a day. Exercise 3, 8 and 11, all the hemisphere synchronization exercise, do it for 5 minutes or 10 minutes twice a day. Exercise 6, the important exercise of super brain yoga, you do it at least 1 minute twice a day. And okay, this is enough for week 3, and I'll see you in a week for now with the final week of this course. See you then.